Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Now that we have understood the non-uniform axial loading, we will go ahead and solve a particular problem. So the problem that you have over here is that you have a bar which is hanging from the top. It is clamped at the top over here and it is being pulled by a force P. But unlike the problems which we looked at, this bar now has some amount of self fit, right? So previously we looked at in all the examples that had no particular self fit, and as you can tell that if this bar also has no self fit, then the deflection at the very end over here is simply going to PL divided by AE, right? Very you know, very flat example. But now you have that if you look at the question that you have to find the end deflection, that is the uh, delta that you are trying to find. So this maybe I'll mark it as uh, that is the delta that you have to find if the bar is hanging under its own weight. So it has a self weight of its own and this gamma is giving which is the unit weight of material. And in addition to that, it is also supporting this uh, particular load P that is there, so which is the end load over here. Right. Okay. So now. Uh, how do we do this? So now we have this load which is sort of percolating from the top all the way to the bottom, right? So suppose if at a distance x we take a you know a, a section over here or an infinitesimally small uh, element dx. Now if I have to maybe write the equilibrium equation for maybe just this particular part that is there just to calculate the internal forces. So remember you have to calculate the internal forces at every step now. Uh, because it's not just the end load P, you have this you know self weight of the material which is also there. So if I you know take this particular section and maybe if I draw just the free body diagram of, of, of that particular part, what I eventually what I essentially get is that suppose this is my you know the bottom part where I have this load P which is acting over here and I have this uh, internal weight that is the you know small self weight which is acting. So this self weight is uh, nothing but your uh, gamma right it is gamma times the area of cross section A and this particular length. So the total length of the bar is L and we have this X over here. So this particular length that you have is L minus X, right? So it is gamma A times L minus X, right? So to balancing all of this, you have this internal force, right? N over here, so N at X, I'm calculating. So N of X is nothing but equals to gamma times A L minus X plus the root P, right? So these are all acting vertically down. So N of X is vertically up over here. Now another way to get uh, N of X, since you guys love doing integrations, another way to get this quantity is, is how do we get it? The other way to get it is you take this, you know, infinitesimally small length uh, DX over here and you essentially integrate from uh, X to L. So another way to get your uh, N of X, if I have to write in that way, will be integral from x to l right uh, we have gamma a dx plus p right so if you do that uh, you will get gamma a times l minus x plus p which is essentially you know equivalent to what you got over here right? same thing yeah. so now that we have the n of x what we are trying to find is the end deflection delta right so let's write the the formula of that one. So we have delta or the d delta for this small element dx. We calculate the d delta, then we integrate from the top to the bottom. So we have of our d of delta is simply going to be n of x dx divided by a times the area of cross section is the same. It is, you know, this formula is equivalent to PL divided by A. I am saying this formula over and over so it gets ingrained in your memory. It's PL divided by AE. So we have this D delta over here. So from this one, if we have to, you know, sort of calculate the delta, what you get is integral. Now we have to integrate from the top to the bottom that is 0 to L. 
n of x dx divided by a of e right where n of x is simply this guy over here so if i have to uh, write it further so it is going to be your delta will be equal to i can put i can pull out the ae uh, outside the integral because it's a constant so i have 1 by ae integral of 0 to l gamma a times l minus x plus p and this entire thing with dx over here right so let me scroll a little down so if i do the integration what i will get is 1 by ae the one which was outside the integral sign if i do the integral what i will get is your uh, gamma a l square minus gamma a l square over 2 plus p times l right so if i you know uh, simplify this and pull this out of the out, out, out of the parenthesis what i will have is that for the first term for this one your a and a will cancel over here so what we will get is gamma l square by 2e right plus pl divided by ae right so this is my uh, eventual delta that i get so this is this is the this is my uh, you know final answer that i have but while i am marking this i want you to introspect a bit i want you to introspect and think that does it logically make sense for instance it is everything is a positive quantity so yes in addition to just having this load p over here because you have a self weight you will have some additional deflection right but suppose the bar was weightless if the bar was weightless so essentially you know gamma is zero you don't have a unit weight this formula reduces to pl divided by ae which is exactly what we had learned if you have a weightless bar with a force p the delta is pl divided by a so that chalks out that makes sense over here so if you gamma was zero so it was the delta is pl divided by ae and now since you have a bar which has some amount of self weight you are getting this additional deflection that is over there another important tip which i want to give you is that once you have the final answer always check the units that you have if you check the units of this one it will be in the units of length that is you know mm or inch or so on and if you put this gamma and l square and things which cancel out and you put this e over here you must ensure that uh, or you can check that the, that the unit of this quantity must also be in mm or inch so you have you have you know oranges compared to oranges and not in you know, oranges and apples that you have two dissimilar units which are sort of coming together and giving your final data. so these are the you know some of the others finer checks that you can you can do right so i hope this problem example was uh, was clear so we had a uh, bar which was hanging of its self weight and this load p and we sort of you know took a small section we found out what is the internal force that is there and from that we calculated the overall deformation delta that was there the next what we're going to look at are actually loaded structures but which are also statically indeterminate and also thermal stress problems so what we have essentially if you if you uh, uh, recall until now that we have looked at structures which are statically determinate for example from the equations of equilibrium you can figure out what are the reactions and what are the forces which are acting in the system we are going to move on to structures which are statically indeterminate now before we do that and uh, let's go back to you uh, know understanding how statically you know, determinate structures behave what we have looked at until now so what you have over here is that both in this particular structure as well as this one over here you can easily calculate these reactions which you see over here for example here r is going to be simply p1 plus p2 here your reaction at this point b is simply going to be equals to this load p over here now while we are at this slide can you uh, maybe guess that what is going to be the deformation of this ac it is essentially not going to have any deformation at all because all the internal stresses in this member are, are going to be in this member cp over here sorry for the you know uh, short uh, digression but you know these are some of the you know, some of the interesting tidbits which you might notice while you look at these problems over here right now next compared to these statically determinate structures where the equilibrium equations are sufficient enough to solve that particular problem 
if we go back go ahead and look at statically indeterminate structures for example the one that you see over here as well as this figure over here so if you see this figure it is clamped at the base and it is clamped at the top so it's it's a fixed fixed condition right and you're applying this particular load p you know intermediate where this cross section changes right now as you can tell that since it is fixed at the top and fixed at the bottom b over here you're not going to have any deformation in the structure but the question is that you know what are these internal loads which we are going to have and also more importantly what are these reactions what we are going to get right and also is this point at this that where the cross section changes is it going to move up and down right although the overall deformation is maybe zero do the sections intermediate they change you know whether they it moves up or it moves down similarly here you have in contrast to this one you have a, a bar which is of uniform cross sectional area a from the top to the bottom over here now again we do not know what are the reactions ra and rb now while we are at this slide can you maybe guess intuitively what is going to be this reaction ra and rb over here before we even solve the problem now maybe you are you have guessed it right so this reaction ra is simply going to be p times b divided by l and rb will be p times a divided by l so this is just from simple intuition and guess but let's see mathematically if you are able to derive these or not right so again so what what how are we going to solve this problem this is a simple example you can have more complicated loadings you can have different kinds of support conditions for example you can have a support condition where here instead of being completely fixed you have a spring with a certain amount of stiffness right so you won't get a free deformation even you won't get no deformation at all but something intermediate so how do we go ahead and you know solve these particular problems that we have over here so essentially what we are going to make use of are these equations of compatibility so so this is important right the equations of compatibility and these are displacement compatibility which we are looking at which essentially means that your final shape or the final deformation has to comply or has to be compatible with the end conditions that you have or any intermediate conditions if you want to have for example in this problem both in this problem and in this problem over here you see that your final deformation that is your delta a b that you have over here must be equals to zero your deformation in this part so if i mark uh, say this particular part one and this particular part two they may have some internal shifting rearrangement but if you look at the whole structure again from a to b that overall deformation needs to be zero right so again in another words what it means is that the change in length of the bar of these individual members for example here for this part a c if I do one and if I do two over here, right, the deformations of this part one and part two, they may have some internal shiftings, but this overall deformation A to B, that is this delta AB, this component over here must be equals to zero. So again, so how do we come back and, and solve this one, right? So here, what you see, if you look at uh, this particular problem, so uh, again, Remember that the, the, the deformation uh, is always that, you know, PL divided by A. We have studied that where we have we substituted the internal forces and we calculate the, remember the case for the non-uniform loading. This is also a case of the non-uniform loading. We calculate the individual deformation, then we sum up to get the total deformation. The only difference is that here in this particular problem, the total deformation is zero, right? So here again, if I have to, uh, take maybe a section in this uh, in in this first part over here in this part one right so if i again mark this as my part one over here and this is part two right and here if i say draw a uh, random cross section over here right so in this cross section if i have to draw the free body diagram of this particular part what do i get if i have to draw the free body diagram i have this load this reaction which is r a over here to balance this one i must have a equal and opposite reaction of r a over here as well right same and same throughout if i take the cross section anywhere just before this point see just to the top of c i'm going to have this internal force r a over here so for this member delta a c right if i have to write the deformation of this member delta a c where the delta a c is always having this tensile force of r a what am i going to how am i going to write that equation so that is going to be my uh, delta of a c right it is going to be 
the reaction remember pl divided by a e so here i have my force r a right times the length of the member ac the length of the member ac is this a over here a divided by a times e the area of cross section is same throughout so i'm going to a times e assuming that the material is the same throughout as well right now similarly in a similar fashion if i have to co consider this particular part over here this bc part and here again if i take uh, maybe a random you know cross section like this and maybe if i consider this bottom part over here you can do the top part as well eventually you will see it works out to the exact same thing if i draw the free body diagram of this bottom part so what i eventually get is that for this particular section i have this bottom reaction which is acting rb right now as long as i am just below this point c over here i am to balance this rb i am going to have to have this another force rb which is acting over here equal and opposite right so if i am looking at this member cb all along just to the bottom point of c up to this particular point b i am going to have a compressive force of rb which is acting right so if i have to write the delta of your uh, bc over here that must be equal to since i have marked this one as positive as a tensile this delta bc must be negative that you have right because it's, it's in compression it is going to be minus of rb times the length b divided by a times e right okay so now what in addition to this see remember my end goal is to find the reactions ra and rb right what is the additional information that i have over here yes you're right the, the equations of equilibrium what i have in this equations of equilibrium is this ra and rb pointing vertically up and this point p pointing vertically down i know that my uh, ra plus rb must be equals to p over here right so these are the three things that we have now the fourth piece of the puzzle is my equation of compatibility simple which is that we know that my, uh, my total delta a b that is a total deformation remember previously what we did was that the delta was the sum of the individual deltas exactly the same thing here delta a b is nothing but delta a c plus delta b c over here so let me just write that delta a c plus delta b c right which is nothing but equal to r a times a divided by a e right plus minus of r b times b divided by a e again right but remember my equation of compatibility in this one is what the equation of compatibility is the top a and the bottom b are exactly at the same place right so this delta a b is essentially equals to zero over here right so again if i have to sort of expand this again so what i have from this one is r a times a divided by a e right plus r b Sorry, I will put a negative sign over here times b divided by a e right must be equals to zero right or if i have to simplify this even further we have r a times a by a e minus of r b times p divided by a e right equals to zero right so we have two equations two unknowns what is the first equation the first equation is this one over here right so this i am going to mark as equation number one right and my second equation is what i just wrote over here oops sorry right second equation is the one which i just wrote over here this is my equation number two right two equations two unknowns so if you solve one and two what you will see that eventually what you will get and you guys might want to try this on your own you will get your reaction r a as equals to 
P times B divided by L and similarly you will get your RB as P times A divided by L right. So this is how we solve the statically indeterminate structure under axial load. Right? So now uh, that we have solved these indeterminate structures. Now another indeterminate structure which I am going to present to you are coming from the thermal stresses. So let's take a look at that and try to imagine that how, how, it, uh, how it acts right. So here you have a case of a thermal stress where you have a bar. It's a very interesting problem. You have a bar over here right uh, which is clamped at the point A clamped at the point B and maybe you have maybe lit a matchstick over there you know or uh, some kind of a candle and because of that you are having an increase in temperature which is this guy delta T over here right now this is a classic example where in a structure you don't have any strain but you have stresses right since A and B are clamped this bar cannot you know expand yeah, because you are applying a temperature so you logically you expect it to expand but it cannot expand and you cannot contract if you are cooling it down but because that it is not able to expand or contract it is going to have this internal stresses so our job is to find that what is this internal stresses or internal forces which are acting on this kind of structure over here now how do we tackle this problem the easiest way to tackle this problem is first to let the bar expand due to the temperature right and then simply push it back to what its original configuration was right so just to explain this in terms of figures what we have you see over here right so what we have is that this point b which was there right i release this point b and i let this point b so i make this point b free from restraint and i make and i let this point b expand right due to this temperature again i'm applying this temperature so i'm going to let it expand with to this deformation which is delta t now can you guess you have studied in your uh, you know heat transfer or your thermodynamics in your uh, plus two that what is going to be the value of this delta t over here so this delta t is simply going to be delta t is L times delta T times alpha right or L alpha delta T right so this alpha remember it is if you if you remember from back in the day this is my coefficient of thermal expansion right? you guys know this so I have let the bar expand with L alpha delta T that I have over there. L is that original length, right? Now my job is if you take a look at the original structure, this B is not moving anywhere. So essentially by putting this support B, what I am doing is that I am restricting this movement, right? So this reaction force which must develop at this particular support, this P which is developing over here must be resisting this uh, movement delta t over here right so now if i have to take this structure and sort of push it back if i have to apply a load p over here and push it back to where b originally was right so maybe just for clarity i mark this point as b prime over here right now i'm moving b prime back to b with this deformation delta p over here which is nothing uh, other than this delta t because you're pushing it back by the same amount right so I have my uh, delta P must be equals to this delta T that I have over here. Right? Now what is delta P? Now imagine that this P that I'm applying to delta P is in a structure which has no stress because I have, I have allowed it to freely expand up to this point B prime. Now I'm pushing it back from B prime back to B over here. So what is this delta P going to be? exactly right delta p is going to be pl divided by ae simple again a bar weightless bar a bar with just an applying a bar which has no stress nothing it is just a bar i'm applying a force p over here right and the deflection is going to be pl divided by ae right so here if i have to write this again my delta p is nothing but pl divided by ae over here it's, it's a compressive force but since i've taken care of the direction where through my pointing that p acts you know uh, points you know towards the left over here pl divided by ae must be equals to this delta t which i've already written above it is going to be l alpha 
delta t right so how do i find this force p simple so if you take a look at this equation this l and this l cancels out over here so what i eventually get is uh, this my force p over here is going to be equals to a e alpha delta t right simple so this is my eventual force so that i will get i messed up that rectangle let me do that again right so this is a e alpha delta t that i get over here now remember this reaction force this p that you are getting over here right in the final structure so this is the p so you can imagine that along this particular side you are going to have an equal and opposite reaction p over here right so coming back to my original structure over here if i have if i'm increasing the temperature by delta t i am going to have two reaction forces both the reaction forces will have the magnitude that i just calculated that is a e alpha delta t right so i hope that with this particular uh, subtopic which we just covered you are now clear with the concepts of how to solve statically indeterminate structures as well as problems with thermal stresses